Hey, let's get you playing smarter tennis, understanding your game better, especially when it comes to your ground strokes. And in today's lesson, we're gonna cover a tip on the backhand and the forehand that can really help you play smarter tennis in your points. And you'll probably get a few more bonus tips as well. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. I'm a USTA high performance coach and former top 100 ATP player. Did that after the age of 30, after two major surgeries. And I'm absolutely passionate about coaching and about helping players get better. I hope you sense that with the information that I share on all of our videos. This one today, we're going to talk about the forehand and the backhand. I want you to focus on the player on the near side. We're going to watch an entire point here. We'll watch it first, and then I'll break it down step by step for you. So it's a second serve, backhand return, back through the middle. The lefty's peppering the backhand, changes directions of the forehand. Gets him pulled wide and then dumps the ball into the net. As promised, I'm gonna show you what's going on with the forehand and the backhand here. Stay for the entire video because I'm going to show why he misses that last backhand. But first, let's look at the return. This is a second serve return. He's playing against a player with a weak serve, and look how far back he is. He's got to be on the baseline or inside the baseline hitting this ball. He's behind the baseline, and he's actually stepping across his body on his front foot. We've covered this in another video before. This is not the correct footwork for a high-level player, an intermediate, or even a beginner. Don't want to be on the front foot there. Want to be on the outside leg. So no, no on the first return. Again, it's a second serve return, and the ball lands at the service line. Any good player is going to take that forehand and redirect here. This player is a good player, but certainly wasn't looking to be as offensive as he could have. He just rolls the ball back. Now, this first backhand here, again, he's stepping across. He really needs to rotate his body more. Uh, after the shot, almost jump around. But he does kind of shank it and, and pushes, the, pushes uh, his opponent back here. Now, he gets this ball, and what he could have done is he could have used an outside hop where you go off of the outside leg and land on the outside leg. But look at how close his feet are together. His base is way too narrow here. So he's got to get his base wider when he lands and when he finishes, okay? Does a good job of getting the ball to the backhand, getting it up to the backhand. Now this ball right here, he's just not really transferring the weight on this forehand. He should get more weight on this front foot and almost push off of that left leg, that front foot as he hits it. He doesn't really push off much. It's a lot of arm. He's not really using his legs a la Roger Federer, getting on that front foot and pushing. <clears throat> now this ball right here, look where it lands. Inside the service line. Hello, let's step into that ball. Let's get on that front foot. He waits for it. He hits it off his open stance. Look how much the ball is dropping. He could have moved up and actually approached on that ball. He could have recognized. He could have been stepping in in this part of the court could have ripped it over here. Instead, he waits for it and just kind of loops it back. So that's a big mistake on that forehand right there where he could have taken control of the point. These are the subtle things that, that are going to make a huge difference for you. If you can see that short ball, get up on your front foot. Now, that backhand right there, again, he loves to step across his body. He's kind of reaching for it. He's using his arms. But he doesn't really square up. Look how narrow that base is. He should be squaring up in a wide base. And then this is the ball that he missed. So the opponent does a good job of playing defense and getting it up. He's got two choices here. The ball is arcing over the net. He should move back and let the ball drop. Or he should move up and get it at the waist. But what does he do? He waits and the ball gets up around the shoulder. If the ball gets up around the shoulder, he's got to leave the ground. He stays grounded with his front foot. He's got to jump in the air, get off the ground, and he goes too, I believe, too low to high. You see how high he goes with his finish? He should go more across with his swing 
and, and again, attack the ball more with his feet, take it earlier. Or as I said before, move back to let the ball drop and play the ball high. This is all about court positioning and, and finding the right place to hit the ball, either taking it early or moving back. This is very common with backhands where players let the ball get up around the shoulder and they don't need to do that. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on the notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please share it with others. It helps us make this channel more popular and get these videos in front of the eyeballs of other passionate tennis players like yourself. Now, before you go, I've got a free course to offer you, a free tennis course. I've got lessons on the serve, the forehand, footwork, single strategy, and double strategy. It's a great little starter course to get you to the next level. You can get it by downloading the Tennis Evolution app. We know, research proves that you are going to learn faster when you watch lessons in an app. If you're on the go, it's like having me as your coach in your pocket, on the court, getting better. Download the app, get the free course. That's the next step so that you can get your tennis to the next level. We'll see you at the next lesson.